Hello everybody, David here with Shadow Six Creations again. Uh, we are going to get back on the B25. Um, I just want to first off say thank you everybody for helping the channel get to 50 subscribers. Um, I'm very grateful for you guys for that. I like being able to do these videos for new beginners, people that have been doing hobbies for a while, you know, sharing my knowledge and seeing whatever, seeing, you know, just just being able to help, you know, for me, model building is therapeutic. It just just helps me stay focused as well. And it's just it's just fun to be able to do to do this. So again, thank you all for your views. Thank you all for you subscribing. And Rashi has just walked in here because she knows that I'm doing a video tonight. So with her, with a little bit of luck from her, um, because it's been a rough week. Uh some of the paint that I have been using um actually was a bad batch. So it's a little frustrating. I had to completely redo the fuselage of the B25. So these bits um, have not been put in the fuselage yet. So we're going to, yeah, I know. I know it's frustrating, isn't it, Rashi? Yeah, she's expressing her disdain as well. So um, we're going to do a couple little different things tonight. Um, I've got the air crew out and ready but i think what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a shorter video tonight um i'm unfortunately not feeling my best right now so let's go ahead and jump in um so we've got the the basics for the cockpit ready to go i've also got the front landing gear which has come out looking really nice uh so let's go ahead and and jump right in and get this started so the first thing we're going to do is uh we're going to get the controls we're going to get the, the seats and the gauge display so not too uh not too much to do now i unfortunately did not follow my rule of um paint after you set everything in place like i said i've, I've unfortunately not been well so i haven't been thinking my clearest so there's an easy fix to that so i just basically take my sharp edge tool and i scrape down to bare plastic because especially with the Citadel plastic glue that I use, you need plastic to plastic contact because it creates that chemical bond that mel that essentially melts the plastic together and creates a better adhesion. So um, that's going to be the first thing that we're going to do. So we're going to clean that off. Uh, and then this is the piece that we're focusing on right now. So there, there are the gauges. So there's not a whole lot that I'm going to need to do to it. Um, so what we're actually going to do, the nice thing is if you look on here, if you're looking at these, I know one of the viewers said that they are actually started this model as well. So welcome to this model. So there's a couple of holes right here. So we're going to very carefully kind of clean those out a little bit. And again, you want a clean, viable surface plastic to plastic. Okay, kind of there we go. That's what we're looking for right there. If it punches through, that's okay. Um, because the majority of this is going to be sitting right there in the center. And again, I do want you want bare plastic to plastic. So let's go ahead using our side cutters. We're going to get that cut out. I love these side cutters, they are one of the best things in the world for that I've ever gotten for models, six bucks at Hobby Lobby. So I'm, yeah, I use them all the time. So we're just gonna do a bit of dry fitting right there. Perfect, that looks really, really good. Okay, so let's make sure that we clean off, clean this area off a little bit. There we go. Okay. All right, now, I'll take a little bit of this. There, there, and there, okay? Quick and easy, this pretty much instantly starts curing. And there is our gauge display, awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our next piece. We're going to go ahead and put the uh, controls on. So 
Let's pull this out. There they are. So right here. Okay. I am out of focus right now just to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, and you want to be very careful with this because it is a very flimsy piece up where... There we go. Now, yep. See, unfortunately, that's one of the things that happens. Wasn't careful enough, so I broke the piece off. But this actually presents a good, a good learning opportunity. So let's stop for a second what we're doing. And oh no, look, one of my pieces broke off. Okay, so one of that broke off. So this is what we're going to do. Um, we're going to very carefully clean off this other piece. Now, because I am using the Citadel plastic glue, this is going to make it a lot easier to set. So let me turn this light off so everybody can get a better view. Um, give me just a second here while I am looking for my good set of tweezers. Here we go. Now, let's get this out of the way so we can see what's going on. So it is not uncommon for these pieces to break like this, especially with how small these are. So we're looking at that, okay? Popped off right there, as you can see, it's supposed to look like that. So this is what we're gonna do. Um, we are going to take and apply just a little bit, just a little bit of this glue. Give me just a second here. Okay, make sure I've got everything out of the way. There we go. Okay, so, and actually, I'm sorry, I'm actually gonna have to have the light on so I can see a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so, what we're gonna do is just a dab, and I mean just a little bit. Now, I'm wearing gloves because I was going to, because I was planning on doing another thing tonight, but I digress. Here we go. So, okay, so you're gonna need a little bit there. A little bit there with this if you're using this it does not take a lot so be careful now here's our tiny component right here now if you have to now don't worry if you've already like I've okay I've already put the glue down don't worry too much about that because it's not gonna be curing instantly okay so here we go take that now the nice thing with this glue is it does tacky up just slightly so just like that see and I'm moving it around shaking it that's a nice thing with this glue so I just have to move it around just slightly to make sure it's in place. So there we go. Looks like it's never been damaged. So, you know, if you make small mistakes like this, like I did, which I'm glad this has happened, uh, that way I could show you how to repair that. I mean, yeah, it does. It, it's not a complicated thing. You know, some of you might be like, oh, it's common sense. Just do that. These are just little techniques that I like to show that I've done. Okay. So what we're going to do now... So we're going to take that, we're going to dry fit it. Now I emphasize the importance of dry fitting in pretty much all of my videos. Dry fitting is going to save you a ton of, a ton of problems. So there we go. That's how it's going to sit. Now I'm going to let that dry for a minute because again, what I have to do is kind of clean out, clean off the mating surface. Okay, so this might take a little bit longer, but that's all right. Okay, now for the channel where it's going to be, I am simply scraping away one side the bare plastic. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, that'll work great. Oh yeah, okay. So 
So what we're going to do now is I'm going to focus on laying, on putting the glue on the side that I've that I've made bare plastic for. Okay, so you're not going to need a lot again. One there, one there, one there. Okay. Now this, especially for pieces like this, I definitely use my tweezers. Okay. Uh, it will just sit in place. All right, there we go. So let's go ahead and take a peek at our instructions here. So we've already got gauges and the controls. Now for that, we're gonna let it dry a little bit more because I wanna be able to paint it without everything moving, especially the piece that is just broken off. So this will, I will probably paint uh, over the weekend to give this time to cure. So let's go ahead and get our seats. The seats, they're quick and easy. Um, you're going to be looking at these two pieces right here. So using the side cutters, there's one, there's two, and then I'm just going to pop that one off, just like that. Okay, quick and easy. Now, since that little piece of the sprue is still on there, we're going to go ahead and clean that off. Now, this year I plan on getting a better video or a better camera since all of my videos so far have been shot with my phone, which is great. Works out very well. But I'd like some better quality videos for everybody. So we're going to dry fit these just like this. Okay. Okay, there we go. Now, if I remember correctly on the B25, I believe these seats were adjustable at one point. So they could slide back and forth for the pilots for ease. So we're going to kind of put it like that. And we're just going to have... Well, that didn't work out, so okay. So we'll just see how... Oh. And that's why we want it to dry completely. So we'll put him in the seat. And the reason I'm doing this is just to kind of gauge where he's going to be, where the seat's going to be. So we'll put it right about there. Let me take, actually use a set of pliers for this. Tweezers, that is. And of course, he's a little top heavy. Too much drinking, you're not supposed to fly. Okay. So that actually works out quite well. So what I'm going to do is actually mark an area. Yep, I'm shaking the camera. Oh. Okay, there we go. Bare plastic, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually put the glue right here on the seats. Right at the bottom. There we go. There we go. And so we said right about there. So that'll let that, we're going to let that cure. Now again, this glue sets quickly, but you definitely want to let it cure over a couple of hours. Okay, so we're going to use the tweezers just to set it in place. Okay, so there is the start of our cockpit. Looking very good, I'm quite happy with that. Now, um, what I'm gonna have to do is actually fashion up a little holding device for the time being because um, if you look at our instructions here, landing gear is actually gonna be bolted to this. So, um, Let's take a look and see how this is going to sit. Okay. Let's 
So that's actually going to sit just like that. Now, what I'm thinking, since this is actually the first time I've actually built this model, um, we're actually going to wait to put this in until we get everything painted up um, and everything set in place. We're going to get the fuselage ready because I don't want this to risk breaking for by accident. Um, I have pets, unfortunately. Um, but one, yeah, my dog right here, she likes to jump up. She likes to get in to see things. So, um, one, I am going to keep this back and away before anybody says anything. And two, um, I want to make sure that everything sets. Make sure there's nothing I have to take apart beforehand. So, we're going to let this cure overnight. And then I will have these painted and ready to go for the next video. Now, let's move on to another piece. Now, this is why I'm wearing gloves. Okay. So, one, let's, uh, for first off, let's talk about our crew members. So our crew members, uh, pilots and ground crew. So let's talk about their uniforms. The the U.S. Uh, as many of you World War II enthusiasts know, um, whether it was a flight crew or the infantry, um, they were all all of drab and khaki. Okay, um, as far as I've seen and and all the history that I've learned over the years. Uh, the flight crew wasn't, it wasn't like the Luftwaffe flight crew. Luftwaffe used the actual Luftwaffe blue uniforms, okay? Um, Germany also, for their infantry, had the German Feldgrau uh, uniform color. For the U.S., going through until late 70s, going into the 80s, uh, used all of drab, that just the straight green. Okay, so the flight crew are going to have that same thing. So they're going to have the khaki, they are going to have the all drab, and then I've got quite a few selections for skin color, so that is something that we will do uh, because we'll do that at a later time because I want to be able to get the pilot in there to make it look like he's doing his flight checks. Okay, so that's actually kind of cool because this one, this pilot right here, has a checklist. So they would be doing their flight checks. Uh, the pilot, he's going to be looking at the gears and know, hey, everything's going to be okay. Uh, we've also got the ground crew that's doing the same thing. And at the end of it, at the end of the video, you know, I do want to have, you know, like a small, um, like a small display to glue these guys onto, make it look like they're doing their flight checks on the ground. So um, we'll look at those here in a little while. Now, and in between videos, definitely do your research on what the colors were you know nothing wrong with doing that there may be something that i've missed okay now here comes one of the more riskier parts of a model let's take a look at the clear components dun 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 no so clear components um i always wear gloves when i am working with clear components for a couple of reasons one, I don't want fingerprints all over my display piece. I hate it. It drives me up a wall. They're not exactly easy to clean. You know, you can use a cotton swab to clean them off as best you can. Do not, for any reason, use alcohol to wipe them off. They will ruin your plastic. I've run into problems with that so many times. It's the same thing with cement glue. Don't get glue on parts that you don't want. It will fog them up and it will destroy your plastic. Okay? I want to make that very clear. That way you're not having any heartache and trouble. So, let's go ahead and take a look at these. Now, um, if you look at pictures or videos of American bombers or any bomber or any aircraft during the Second World War, uh, the panels uh, were put in place where the frame is. So, I want to cut... So, I know that didn't make any sense, I'm sorry. So let's kind of take a look here. So if we're looking at, there we go, perfect view. So if you're looking at the pictures right here, you see how it has those lines? That would symbolize the frame. And perfect shot right here shows that you would paint those, okay? Um, I don't have my other aircraft here to show you 
Um, but it'll make sense as we go along doing this. So now there's a couple ways you can do this. The first one is you can freehand it, uh, which I will be doing. I'm quite glad that they have two sets of glass and I can always order more if I need to. You can find them on eBay, anything like that. Um, you can freehand it, but especially for beginners, if you don't feel confident doing that yet, masking tape, line it off. And so I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do that tonight. So let's say I'm a newbie, I'm, I'm new at this and I don't have the most confidence. So what I'm going to do, let me see if I have a little bit of a darker background. There we go. That will actually work perfect, my bag of files. Okay, let's kind of get the camera down a little bit more. See if we can't show this a little bit better. As a matter of fact, let's do it this way. Okay, so you're all going to move with me for a minute here. Okay, so let's kind of take a look at this. So, turning off our light, you see these panels right here. You see these lines. They're a little hard to see. I'm sorry, it's not in the best of focus. But as I paint them, it's going to come out a little bit easier for you. So, there we go. So, you see those panels, the lines where the panels are. That's what we're going to be painting. So, let's get you guys back up here on the camera mount. There we go. Get you in place. I'm going to get that light back on. So, that's what we're going to be focusing on. Okay. So, let's take a look here. So, you're new, so you're new at this. You're new at models especially with glass like this. So this is what you can do. As close to the very end of the panel as you can, lay down some strips of paint of uh, tape. I want to make something very clear. You need to make sure that that is completely pressed down. That way there is no risk of your paint escaping and going under, going under your tape, okay? Um, it you can you can definitely clean off your you can definitely clean off the glass but i would recommend letting your paint dry and um if it's still fresh take a cotton swab with some distilled water do not scratch it with a tool of any kind it will damage your glass okay so here is my first example well let's fix that I want to line that up with the, the frame that the glass sits in, okay? So I'm going to push that down as best I can. So that's one way you can do this. Now that's going to help you paint just the frame, okay? That's going to help you just paint just the frame. Now I'm going to kind of show you a little bit. And again, if I make a mistake on this, that's great. That's another thing that I can show you on how to fix. But if not, well, you get the idea. So I'm going to take my fine detailing brush. Okay. Then I'm going to take my palette here. We're going to put down a little bit of olive drab. Now, if you were doing the Finito Benito uh, version of this model, you would be using aluminum. Okay, same principle applies on this. Okay, so I'm going to take and I'm going to drench my brush a bit. That way it holds on to it pretty well. Now, I'm going to very carefully just start laying down my paint. You don't want it to be too thick of the line. You don't want it to be too thin. That way it's even all the way across and it looks like the frame of an actual aircraft and the paint is all one solid piece. Now, I'm also going to make something very, very clear. Let this dry. Let the paint dry all the way through before you take away your paint or you take away your tape, okay? Now... I let me go back on not using tools just to take excess paint off if you get it onto the glass. You can use, you can find these in Hobby Lobby. These are rubber or these are silicone applicators. Okay. They're not going to damage 
So you see I'm doing that right now. It's not going to damage your glass, okay? Um, you'll have to put a little bit of pressure on. It might take you a little bit to do it, but that's how you can get paint off of your glass pieces, okay? Now, if you're like, no, nah, I'm too cool for tape, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? So I'm going to take a little bit of that. Just like this. Now there might there might be some a little bit my with my hand shaking there might be some excess onto the glass. That's okay. Because we can use that tool. Once everything is dry, I will emphasize that again. Wait until everything is dry. Well you don't smudge and smear. A little bit more. Now, keep in mind, too, I am using just the tip with just the slightest bit of paint at a time. Okay, there we go. Now, I've purposely done it this way to show you as a way to clean it up. But that's what it's going to look like, okay? We'll clean that up, and we'll put on another layer if we need to. Now, let's go ahead and peel this away. Very, very carefully. Okay, there's one. And two. Now, let's take a look at that. So, there's obviously some spots that we'll have to touch up and we'll have to uh, fix. But that looks dry enough now that I want to demonstrate this to you. So... There's a little piece right over here. This is going to be hard to see. I'm sorry. I will do um, another video demonstrating this a little bit more. Okay. So it acts as an eraser. And there we go. See? It starts peeling it away. Um, they they come in like a pack of five or six. So uh, that's definitely something you can look at for uh, future projects. Okay. So... Um, that's where we're going to end the video right now. I want these to cure overnight and I'm letting the fuselage, the fuselage is actually, Ooh, we are right there. So the inside of the fuselage is ready for the additional pieces, which we are going to be doing in the next video. Yeah, that came out looking perfect. Oh yes. Okay. Okay. There we go. So that is all of drab on the interior. I well, just want to make that clear. This is all all of drab. Um, this is the testers. That's what I've used. A better can of it now. So um, stay tuned. We are going to be doing. We are going to be pretty darn close to getting the fuselage together. In the next video, that's going to be the goal. Uh, we are going to be aiming to put. The small pieces in the fuselage as is shown right here. So we will do, be doing these small bits. We will be drilling out the whole, or no, okay. So that's for the Jaunty, that's for, nope, that's correct. I'm sorry. So that's for Jaunty Joe. And we'll be putting all of our components on. We will be getting the uh, landing gear with the cockpit. We will get to be, this will be all painted and ready to go. We will be focusing on those small pieces. We will get our ground crew ready. And we are going to be putting together, possibly be putting together our fuselage. So stay tuned. Uh, again, thank you all for helping the channel get to 50 subscribers. I um, feel very humbled by that. Thank you all. Uh, thank you to my fellow hobbyists and World War II enthusiasts. I will see you all later, so you all have a good night.